It's an unprecedented crisis with no end in sight. The COVID-19 virus continues its relentless march across the globe. Millions are getting sick. And fatalities are increasing alarmingly. Healthcare providers find themselves on the front lines of COVID-19, struggling to take care of the explosion of gravely ill patients under the most challenging circumstances, and grappling with a myriad of complicated life and death decisions. In this dire environment, practical ethics guidance is more important than ever, equipping medical personnel with the tools they need to make the toughest decisions they may face in their careers. It's not just a disease that I'm facing, it's a person. And how do I integrate that into my work so that person experiences me as a provider, as a caregiver in the same way that they would a loved one, a family member? The Center for Practical Bioethics responds to the needs of clinicians and provides them with resources to ensure they're equipped to deal with the real world situations they encounter. Those efforts have continued in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis with free pandemic resources, including the COVID ethics update, practical and theoretical guidance for practitioners, and COVID-19 webinars, covering issues ranging from crisis standards of care to the impact of the virus on shared decision-making and advanced care planning. The goal, to help those on the front lines provide the best patient care. I hope that I can help them make better decisions rather than worse decisions. What we do, what is done, matters when it's a matter of somebody's body, somebody's health. It matters. The Center's work in ethics education, advocacy, and policy goes back more than three decades. What's special about the Bioethics Center is that it is about putting things into action not just into a public policy paper. It's about how do we actually implement and make things go. I see just a tremendous leap forward over the last 30 years because of what they've done. Shortly after its founding in 1984, the center became a leader in promoting and supporting ethics committees, an important mechanism for healthcare providers to grapple with ethical issues resulting from medical advances and find solutions for patients. We saw this as an opportunity to really help people who were struggling with issues, and nobody else was kind of charting the course. The center provided ethics committees with training and educational resources to help them get off the ground, develop and review organizational policies, learn to conduct ethics consultations, and educate committee members to do ethics. You can't do ethics unless you argue. There are many different ways of arguing and justifying and being open to one another that have to be encouraged in ethics committees. We tried to teach professionals to think ethically and argue ethically. It was a great experience. An experience that enabled committee members, regardless of their healthcare setting, to gain the knowledge and confidence to assist when they received a referral from a colleague. Ethics committees don't tell people what to do, but we would discuss all the different angles of a situation and then provide them with more information. But those decisions still have to be made at the bedside by the people directly involved. And I think that's what kept drawing me back in going to the meetings is because I wanted more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be a better person and a better advocate for my patient. In order to address challenging issues that all hospitals faced, the center convened the Kansas City Regional Hospital Ethics Consortium, now the oldest continuously operating entity of its kind in the country. We met with people from other committees at other hospitals. We talked about how we managed cases, how the committee did its work, and the center became a primary resource for us. The result of these efforts? 
the consortium created policy guidelines for a wide range of complex issues, from the care of patients with HIV AIDS to end-of-life decision-making. I really value conversation, just hearing people talk about these issues, how they would approach them, what the pitfalls are and how we avoid those, and just keep learning from other people's experiences. The consortium's work led to the creation of Caring Conversations, the center's signature program that guides families through advanced care planning, enabling individuals to make their health care wishes known. Our job is to make sure that the outcome that we are all hoping for can be achieved in a way that's consistent with the patient's goals and good medicine. These days, the healthcare landscape is changing dramatically. The increasing flood of information, the rapid development of new technologies, it's all intensifying the challenges faced by clinicians and the need for timely ethics support. I strongly believe that bioethics is intimately linked with technology. Just because we can does not mean that we should. Medical technology is wonderful in advancing what we can do. We also need to advance ethically in understanding of what should we do. In response to those changes, the center is transforming training opportunities and using technology to meet the current needs and expand the audience. Webinars, in-person workshops, online publications, consultations on Zoom. The paradigm for learning is the same, but the room is bigger and it's all making an impact in real time. When things don't go the way you want them to go, you've got the support of the center and you can always reach out to them and say, hey, how can you help me with this? Because I need help. And when clinicians get the ethics support they need, patients and families are the beneficiaries. All it takes is that one time when you have a family member or you yourself get admitted all of a sudden everything changes. And then you see how vulnerable people are. And the more trust you can build with them as an organization, then the better the outcomes are. We believe in upholding patient rights, abilities to do good and not do harm, and uphold the principles of justice. It's our way of ensuring that patients receive the most ethical care possible. A task made all the more challenging by the strain COVID-19 is putting on the healthcare system. Even so, ethics champions are meeting the challenge, doing the right thing even when it's hard, and bringing bioethics to the bedside to benefit patients, families, and caregivers. Why do we do that? Because we're human. And we have brothers and sisters, not just in Kansas City, we have brothers and sisters throughout the world. That's what we think we ought to do.